are watching over the back fence, a conversation among neighbors. And this is a production of Neighborhood Falmouth. Today, our conversationalists include Jackie Pratt, Mary Pat McKenzie, Marion Bihari, and me, I'm Susan Lauch. And our conversation today is about who would you speak to, dead or alive? So this can be, you know, some incredible historical figure. This could be somebody very personal to you. Um, and it doesn't have to be one person, but um, who wants to start? I'll start. I will. No, oh, okay. No, Jackie, you go. You go. <laughs> Jackie, you're up. Um, I, I, what came to mind immediately was uh, Mother Teresa. And oh. So the person who taught me to to um, meditate it was was a, a she was an expert in uh, Roman coins and worked for South Sea Park Bernay in New York in New York, and she she spent five years with Mother Teresa, and I, I was oh, always yeah. and but um, she she showed up in Calcutta because she had a break between auctions. And um, in a in a beige silk suit and red fiery red fingernails, and there was a little nun who came to the door, and she said, "I I've, I've come to meet with the sister and spend some time here," and and the, the little sister shook her head and said, "Oh, mother's going to want to talk to you." <laughs> like like you're going to really fit in here. <laughs> Wow. But she she left me with a, if you, she, I've always thought she had an amazing sort of grasp on, on things. Um, and both the, both the meditation teacher and Mother Teresa. And I, I think I, I've often thought of her quote that, uh, that some somebody who was going to donate to her said, you know, you're only a drop in the bucket. And uh, she's a, a drop in the ocean. And she turned to him and said, but I think the ocean would miss my drop. <laughs> um, say that again, the ocean, what? Will miss my drop. Will miss my drop. That's nice. That's interesting, yeah. That's really and, nice. And when, when I'm feeling frustrated, I remember that. that, that uh, I, think, I think the ocean would miss my drop. So. I love that. It makes me think that we should talk sometime about philosophies for living. Maybe that's a mm. too broad of a topic. Yeah. I don't know if people have a coda by which they live. Um, but anyway, depends on the day of the week, <laughs> <laughs> right? Right. Yeah. Exactly. That's so true. Uh, who wants to go next? Well, go ahead, Mary Pat. No, well, I, I, I would. There's a group. I would like to have been at the round table in New York. I would like to have listened to all of the reporters report that the, the great thinkers of, of, I guess it was the 20s and 30s, talking about what they felt about, that was such a critical point between the two wars, between World War I and World uh -huh. War II. Uh -huh. And they were cynical, they were funny, they were sardonic, and there were women who were the full equal of men and I just think to have spent, you know, a, a couple of, I think they met in the middle of the week, but a couple of, of their gatherings where they're, you know, sort of drinking and talking and analyzing what is going on in the world would be fabulous. It would be just so interesting. And, um, and I suspect they were um, not exactly restrained in how they spoke and what language they used. So I fit right in because I'm not either. <laughs> <laughs> so Mary Pat, who was there? Name some names. Um, well, now, of course, I'm going to go totally blank on that. There was, um, uh, oh my goodness, uh, two women. One of them, McCarthy, was um, actually a child of the Sacred Heart as I was. She was taught by the Sacred Heart nuns. And, um, oh, you, you put me on the spot. I'm gonna have- I'm sorry, to yeah. Well, we can always come back to it, but yeah. I, I, th 
sounded like maybe there were presidents and oh no 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 they were all writers they were all writers oh, uh, like a, no politicians no any of that like dorothy parker or dorothy parker was that. one dorothy yes parker. and um and so they no they had nothing to do with politics other than their commentary on politics ah. Which okay, I think, so, yeah, that's what I thought meant by the round table. So like the New Yorker, New York Times, you know. Yes, Atlantic Magazine, of all of those publishers and writers. And, and it was a fluid group, too. I mean, I think there was a there was a core, but it was a fairly fluid group of, of people coming in and coming and going and and just looking at where society was. Yeah. It might be fun to look back at what they wrote about it at the time. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. yeah, look that up online. Yeah. Something. Yeah. I love so, Yes, that. it was. And, and the women of that time had an absolutely equal say to the men. Mm. Which well, you, you were right in, you were right in the, the sort of era where, um, you know, the abolitionists had melded into the suffragettes, you know? Mm. And so that you're and and women were beginning to think these um absolutely revolutionary revolutionary right. ideas such as you know the woman you know women belong in the house and the senate you know <laughs> right. well and i'm pretty sure they didn't support the abolitionists because they were meeting in the bar yeah. No, 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 no. The, um, the, the, you know, the, the, the anti-slavery group kind yes. of over, yeah. over, over time. Oh, no. not the anti-liquor group. No. Yeah. no, 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 no. Oh, God, that's where my brain goes. No. <laughs> the thing is that, that um, you no, know, the, 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 uh, the, um, the, the sort of anti-slavery group started melding into the suffragettes. And that's great. I didn't know that, but that. But didn't, wasn't that earlier? Yeah, but the thing oh, is, yeah. by the time by the time the the round table had happened, you know, the suffragette movement was really something cooking. You know, that that the the, the the vote for women, all of those things was. But they didn't they have the vote by then? They had the vote. Well, they got the, the vote in sixteen, but they, they not everywhere, <laughs> and, and not everyone. Um, but they they were still marching. Um, See, they weren't marching in Canada. I don't have a background on some of that. Yeah. Just PBS did a whole thing on the suffragettes. It was very yeah, good. See, I thought they about, were World War One. Yeah, you're talking about the 20s and 30s, right? Yeah, more, and and predominantly the 30s. The These were this was the 1890s, 1880s, mm. uh, when they first. I think that's when they first started. Probably a little bit before that. Because I'm thinking of the period when Hitler was rising in, in Germany and, um, yeah. you know, it was post, post the, the, the crash, the Wall Street crash, and it was, um, and communism had, uh, many of these members had strong communist sympathies right. Right. because they, um, or at least socialist sympathies, because they, they really felt that you know, the world needed to look after each other was their big thing. Mm -hmm. And um, so I think, and you're right, they were abolitionists, but they weren't slavery abolitionists. They wanted to get rid of prohibition. Well, they ignored it. Mm. Oh yeah, they ignored it. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Well, most of the country ignored it. <laughs> right. uh, yes, in fact, my husband's grandfather got busted for rum running from Nova Scotia to New York and spent a night in jail there. Oh, just only a night, huh? Well, because he was a foreigner, so they sent him back. Wow. Oh my goodness. That's great, that's great. Oh my goodness. Okay, Marion. Yes. Dead or alive? Uh, both dead and personal. Um, the person that I would really like to speak to right now would be my father. Mm -hmm. um, there were so many things that as a young child and as a teenager, I didn't learn about. Um, his family, uh, his sibling, all kinds of things, what it was like growing up. 
I don't think he really ever talked about it very much. And um, he was very closed mouth. So I, as an adult now, would like to go back and speak to him and ask him questions, questions that a younger person wouldn't think about asking their parent. You know, as we age, we have different ideas of what we want to talk about. So that's one person. The other person that I've always admired was Eleanor Roosevelt. Mm -hmm. And I've read about her. Um, and, you know, when she was at the United Nations, I've watched a number of documentaries about her. And I admire her very much and just her whole attitude around people. And so she is somebody that I would like to sit down with and just talk. I mean, she had a really difficult childhood. It was difficult when she got married. You know, he had a, uh, he had someone on the side. Uh, so she had to grin and bear it. And, and after he died, she really flowered. Oh. And so she is someone that I would like to speak to. I have one of her books that I'm, I must have gotten at like a yard sale or something like that, uh -huh. paperback. And I think it's You Learn by Living or something like that. Right. And it's, you know, it's it's advice for all different kind of stages of life and whatnot. And right. I, I agree, she's, she's really a pillar. I really started, the first book I read about it was Eleanor and Franklin. And, oh, yeah. I, love, and I love that book. And then after that, I started reading more about her and watching her. And there was uh, not long ago, a documentary on PBS about them. And then after he died, more about her. And it was really fascinating. And, and she was just a wonderful person. Marion, so, have you ever had the chance to go to the house on the Hudson? Uh, we went to um, Hyde Park. That's what I mean. That, that's, yes. Yeah. yes, long time ago. Uh, we and, did go there. Yeah, because it has a very strong presence of her because she was there for a long time after he died. Right. Yes, we did go there many, many years ago. When we lived in New York and we went up there. I can't remember how much, how long ago, but we did go. And I'm sure it's exactly the same because they Oh, yeah. Right. Yeah, we went yeah. just a couple of years ago and it was it was really interesting. And his house we also went to his sort of family house yes and i think hers was farther up the hill and um um and i just remember learning that his mother was so wicked to her and, oh, yes. um, absolutely she sarah that. delano she was not a nice lady no she was not and you can see pictures of them you know and the three of them together, and she, she, the, you know, the mother really was quite something mm. nasty. A force <laughs> to be reckoned God. with. <laughs> yeah, really. Oh my so. gosh. So, and, uh, and there was problems with the children too. I mean, there were like some of them were very successful, and some of them were not. And she had a tough, tough life. How, yeah, she did. Who, whose children? Frank um, and Eleanor's? Yes. How many kids yeah, did they have? I think she had four. Three I or four. I think there were five and one died. Oh, okay. I, I may have I may have a biography behind me, but um finding it might not be it might be a messy job when I oh, pull it. might be hard to read very Yes, much. everything will fall down. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but that's good. Yeah. I love Maybe. it. Well, I love that we've all picked women too. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yes. That's nice. Yeah. That's nice. So um, I will. Well, you, Susan, I was going to ask you. Yeah. yeah. So I think that, you know, automatically I uh, think about my parents. And, you know, I lost my mom. I, that's such a strange phrase. But uh, my mom died um, right before the pandemic started. And, um, uh, and, it, and she went very quickly and I still, and she was, she was so healthy, so healthy and so pulled together and didn't need glasses, didn't need hearing aids, didn't need any kind of walking thing. She was like 87. She was just 
she had it going on. And then, you know, we discovered she was really, really sick. And then that was it. It was over. And um, anyway, so it just, um, I still miss her so much. And I, I miss my dad too. And I, it's just so funny, you know, it's just a piece of growing up is realizing that you stand alone, that this safety right. net that they created mm -hmm. Which you know still remains in in a lot of ways. Um, you know the 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 things that they left for us. Um, you know and 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 all the ways that they helped provide for us. You know even as we became adults, it's still. It's just yeah, I feel a little untethered, and I talk to my mom all the time, and so um, so I just miss that, and you know I try. Um, calling my sister all the time and it's not the same you know and oh, no. <laughs> I keep no. expecting her like don't you want to hear the stories and you know and don't you want to tell me the stories and yeah anyway so um so yeah so I it would definitely be them and you know listening to you guys talk about these historical figures I I don't know there are so many people that I would want to talk to I sometimes my go-to is da Vinci a lot of times because mm. he was such an incredible inventor and he just you know when he was an artist and he was just he just had this amazing mind but i also love um you know i i you know to sit and talk with the obamas would oh, totally oh yeah knock my yes, socks off absolutely and, um so yeah so i mean but the thing is like you know if i really had it chance to talk to somebody like a really important historical figure I, I would feel like an idiot you know I just like what would I say like you know what was the toughest part for you or what what was your greatest success or you know whatever I mean I would just want to be probably just listening to them talk like the round table like you discussed yeah today, Pat, fly you know, on the wall just to be there hearing it all yeah and watching people in action and stuff mm. like that but you know that i you know kind of level of conversation that i could have with somebody who was so incredibly worldly and smart and and exposed to so many things would just you know it would have to be so dumbed down to like connect <laughs> to my you know what i mean it was just like but anyways um yeah but it's fun to think about these things yeah you know? And wouldn't it be crazy to think that maybe, you know, generations from now, someone would say they, one of the people they would want to speak with is one of us. Yes, that would be very oh, interesting. I have another question. Do any of you dream of somebody who has died and you feel like you're talking to them and then you wake up and you go, oh, that was a dream, but it feels so real. That's, I don't think that's ever happened to me. I... I always have, and I, I mean, I was very young when my father died, I was seven. Mm. And um, I used to dream that he came to visit me in the living room in the middle of the night and I would go downstairs and sit there and talk to him. Um, but I've also had very close friends die when they were young or when my cousin Mary died a couple of years, five, six years ago now, who was like my sister growing up. I, I still dream about her and it's like, I will, I, I'll even have, you know, like arguments with her in my dreams. Oh my God. know that she's dead about, or is she alive? Is what's she that? alive in the dream? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, not, it's not in the past. It's like, it is the present and she's telling me what to do as she, as was her want. And, um, and I am responding. So sometimes I think it's maybe a way to hammer out ideas or things that have crossed my mind that um, I want approval of or something. Mm -hmm. And so the people I dream of talking to about are people that, you know, would have said you're nuts or not. Mm -hmm. What were you going to say, Jackie? I, I, I've done that with, with people who, who passed away who uh, are important, mm -hmm. who were important to me. And I think a lot of you know that I have, I, I, my mom had had a real, real problem with life and alcohol and drugs and herself and, and but at any rate, um, I, I will, I will, I will have huge arguments with her, you know, and um, I, 
at one point I, I was in therapy and I kind of half mentioned it. And um, this, the psychiatrist suggested that I was, I was resolving my issues and that was a healthy thing. I'm I think that's to, true. Yeah. Yeah. I, and I, I think that I, I really, I, because I'd feel better afterwards because as a kid, you don't, wow. you don't have a big voice. Yeah. As an adult, I have a huge voice. <laughs> and, and I, right. you know, and very, and I, I was never afraid during that kind, that kind of situation because I felt I was an adult and in control. Mm. And I could wake it's up. comforting. It's yeah. very comforting. Yeah. yeah. And, and I, I mean, I had, I have a cat who passed away and I will talk to the cat sometimes, mm. but I talk to cats. So, you know, but I've, 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 I've said, you know, I've, I've, I've had um, that half awake and half asleep kind of thing, dreaming. And, and, and said, I miss you so much. You were the best cat. You never ate my plants. You know, I mean, I did crazy stuff, but I, yeah. That's not crazy if you've had a cat and then the cat eats your plants. Yeah. I understand that. I had that too. We should maybe have a conversation about dreams. I was just, yeah, I've already written it down, Mary. Yes, uh, yes. The dreams, do you fly? Do you talk with the dead? So that will show yeah. one of our conversations. Yeah. But you know what? It happens that when you dream, when you wake up within a few minutes, you forget most of your dream. Depends on the person. Not everybody. Yeah, it does. I think it right. yeah. And if you make a point to like talk about it and think about it, and then you kind of put it in a different place in your memory. So yeah, well, I, yeah, don't talk to I think about every therapist, I, every therapist that one goes to wants to know about your dreams. <laughs> huh. I don't know. Well, okay, that might be a different topic. What your right. therapist yeah. has said about your dream. But, but there's, there's actually a reason why we, we dream about flying and or, or falling or and I, I have I have both flying and falling dreams from time to time. Because you're falling out of bed and you end up on the floor. Right. <laughs> I know. I don't. I've never done that. But what? What is the answer, Jackie? It, 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 when we, when human beings sort of started developing and, and forming societies and, and whatever, they, it, we were, you know, our early development development was on the African um, savanna, and we lived. We'd stay at night in trees like apes or monkeys. Oh, interesting. And we used to be safe from predatory, you know, other predatory animals. So we would, uh, we would, if, you, if you fell out of the tree, you were in trouble. So that that was a, it, it was a it, I think there are people who, who believe that all human beings have falling dreams and flying dreams. Really? Because of, hmm. we, because, hmm. because of where we came from. But it's it's a it's one of those um what did Young call them um the the, the, the memory that's in the whole species yeah <laughs> yeah huh. all of those although I might say know. for me it's water but interesting I can't come I, to this I love that theory so I think we should wrap this up yeah. and I want to say thank you very much for joining us we hope we'll see you next time on over the back fence a conversation among neighbors take care bye